Having played the PC version of Blade and Sorcery for over 600 hours, I am honestly quite impressed how they managed to pull off Nomad. Before this video starts, I'm going to do a shameless plug. I'm trying to get to 10k subscribers, so if you want to hit that subscribe button, it will help me out a ton. I make virtual reality and comedy style videos. I do a little bit of everything, so if that seems like something you'll enjoy, then go ahead and subscribe. Also, follow me on Twitch because I stream. With that being said, give this video a like to help it boost in the algorithm and let's begin with the video. This was here because there's blood in the video and YouTube doesn't like that in the first 40 seconds. I'm very impressed on how good Blade and Sorcery Nomad looks. So here is a side by side and in a minute I'm going to reveal which one is which. See if you can guess which is Nomad and which is PC VR. You start your journey washed up on a beach and have to kill some people that have invaded your home that isn't your home yet but will be soon. Get ready for Once you've claimed your home, head to the Baron's Bounty, where you will surprisingly get to meet the Baron. The Baron is Blade and Sorcery's resident mascot, community manager, etc, etc. And the Baron actually voices the Baron in Blade and Sorcery. And as a personal favour to him, I'm going to help you get started. If you're the busy type, I won't keep you. And he now has a shop that lets you buy things from him because that's what shops do. You can also sell things to the shop that you find in the dungeons as well. Starting off, you'll have to go through basically a tutorial dungeon. During this tutorial, you'll find you are dispatching enemies with rusty weapons or just about anything that you can find. After you have completed the tutorial, you need to go through two more dungeons to unlock the brand new bigger dungeons, the Delagrian Ruins. To enter the bigger dungeons, you need to find map pieces that are found at the end of the normal dungeons. You need two or three of these depending on how far in the game you are and you also get a bunch of treasure at the end of them as well. And at the end of this bigger badder dungeon you get to fight a brand new enemy, Old Hector. Hector is a giant stone golem and he, they, it get stronger as you progress. So after beating him, you manage to get a crystal. And this crystal shard can be used to increase one of the five aspects. And they are body, mind, fire, gravity, lightning. And so you always notice this spinny thing back at home. Each of these aspects have their own skill tree. And you use the crystal shards you collect in the dungeon to increase your power. There is a ton of skills to unlock and it's really impressive that this is all compact on a single headset that you can play wherever you want. It's amazing. You can mix and match these skill trees at will. So if you want to go full mage and rain hell down on your enemies, you can. If you want to go full melee and just be a melee fighter, you can. You can also just go full ranged and become a ranging night magic man. It's completely your choice. I really like the idea of having a little bit of magic but mainly melee because that's my strong suit. As you play through the game you uncover a well crafted but subtle story. It has been done in a way that you can just be murder magic stabby game if you want it to. 
But if you start reading between the lines, it gives you a very interesting world to explore and live in for a short while. And I really like that, having the choice to engage in the lore and the world and the story, or just being a psychopath if you want to. It's not all 100% positive, I did encounter some very serious lag while playing, which sort of affected my gameplay a little bit. But take this info with a pinch of salt, because I was capturing footage at the time, so that could have been the reason why I was experiencing a large amount of lag, and remember these things can be patched out in future updates, which I'm very certain that Warp Frog will do. <gasps> Long story short, Blade and Sorcery Nomad is a fantastic and very reasonable game. The game will switch from the $14.99 to $29.99 as of full release, which I think is not a bad price considering the amount of effort and work that has gone into this game. I think that Warp Frog have done an absolute absolutely exceptional job at porting this once PC VR game to a standalone platform and it works really well. They should be extremely proud of themselves and what they have accomplished by being able to make this game look so good on what is fundamentally an Android platform. It gets a definite recommendation from me.